Our next guest is a journalist who has been reporting on the underworld of the black market for over 15 years. Now you can see her bravery and her important work on display on Nat Geo's hit show, Traffic. Please welcome Mariana Van Zeller. Hi, lady. Thanks for having me. Hello, Mariana. So excited to have you. Well, we want to get right into your show, Traffic. Uh, for those who don't know, what is the show about? <laughs> It's a crazy adventure. It's an eight-part series show, basically, and in each episode, we travel into, we gain unprecedented access into black markets, global black markets all around the world, whether it's drugs or guns or uh, sex trafficking, uh, you name it. And uh, the idea is that we really want to get sort of as deep into these uh, underworlds as we can. Wow. Yeah. Mariana, to me, you have one of the most scariest jobs in the world, and I know that you put yourself in risky situations. But I've also heard that you yourself don't consider your job as dangerous. You don't consider yourself in danger. So how mentally, after meeting the faces of criminals and being in the center of these trafficking rings, how do you go home and feel safe and, and, and not let it get into your mental? Absolutely. You know, it's not that I don't consider it to be... Uh dangerous it is dangerous i go to dangerous parts of the world for sure it's just that there is a lot of training and preparation and security meetings that go into place before we had to do these stories you know obviously no story is worth a life but then on the flip side when we when i do come back yeah i mean there's moments definitely that i worry i mean especially since the show started airing it's interesting because uh, not so much from the people that we hang out with, the, the so-called criminals and the outlaws, because we are very clear with them, transparent from the beginning about what we're doing. You know, it takes a long time to get there, uh, to get a yes from them, to get access, to allow that, to, for us to be allowed to, into their worlds. But mostly from fans, like, um, you know, weird, weird things about, you know, what they, uh, just strange things. And that's scary. That's to me is scarier in a way. Could you give us an example of what it felt like when your life was in danger while doing your job? Well, there's a, there's, I mean, there's a, many moments where, you know, we go to these dangerous places surrounded by people with gunmen, with the guns, AK-47s, AR-15s. Uh, there have been so many situations, but the, I think the interesting thing is that a lot of times the actual danger comes from where you least expect it. You know, I was reporting in the Amazon jungle once and also doing a story about biopiracy where there's sort of armed groups that go into the Amazon. So there was that danger and that's sort of what I was focusing on. And instead what happened was that a few weeks after I left the Amazon, I figured, I realized that I was, uh, I had uh, leishmaniasis, which is a flesh eating parasite that I caught from a little tiny sand fly in the Amazon. And I think situations like that just show you that a lot of times you can be concentrated and focused and do everything you can to avoid risk on one side, but then sort of, a, you know, the danger comes from where you least expect it. And that's what happens to me in that situation. Yeah. I, but do you think being a woman gets you more access to the black markets and the people who work in them? I do. I do. It has yeah. really been my experience that, um, I mean, apart from the fact that we women are better than men in almost everything, <laughs> I think we're seen as less threatening. I'm definitely seen as less threatening to some of these groups that we approach. Mm -hmm. But mostly, I think, and this is the most important, and this is definitely a characteristic that we kick ass uh, when it comes it, it, compared to men, is that we are just more uh, empathetic. People are more inclined to talk to me once I'm there and I tell people I'm just here to listen to your story. I don't, I'm not here to judge you. I truly am curious in, and interested in figuring out how you became a drug dealer, how you became a, you know, a gun trafficker. Um, yeah, again, no judgment. I'm here with empathy. So great. That word empathy rings loud for me when you had the episode um, featuring the sex trafficking pimps and the leaders of those circles, especially when you had empathy for that one trafficker that really just owned his job and what he did. How difficult was that topic to cover? That was so hard. That was really one of the hardest. Yeah. And it's exactly because of that, because I do try to approach everything and everyone with empathy. Uh, but some of those stories are hard, you know, and, and that one in particular, when you're sitting down with people and they're telling you the horrific things they tr the, they do to women, the way they treat women, you know, listening to that case that you're talking about, it was a, a pimp who goes by the name of Jack Knife. And we spent many days trying to convince him to set, sit down with us for an interview, and eventually he did. 
And uh, when he's telling us the stories about when one of his women fled and he was able to find her and he cut her, the soles of her feet with a, a razor blade, you know, I just wanted to stand up and leave. And, and I was so mad and angry. And I thought, how am I going to be able to st just sit here and continue asking him uh, questions? But I did, you know, that's at the end of the day, that's my job. And, uh, and when you actually hear his story and once you start digging deeper into where he grew up, you know, the people that were considered sort of the heroes in his neighborhood, you know, uh, people in his family and his whole story, you sort of, you might, obviously you don't condone any of it, but at least there's a little bit of an understanding. And I'm a true believer that without understanding, we're never going to be able to solve any problems in the world and be definitely not uh, black markets. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And how hard is it for you, Mariana, to not want to wrap up the interview and just kind of run and go contact authorities, give them the tip that you now have? How difficult is that? Do you get approached to do that? No, and you know, it's actually not hard at all. Uh, that is, I'm, I'm very, I know very well what my uh, job is and that I'm there to report, to witness and to eventually show what I've witnessed to the world. Uh, it is not my job to do the work of law enforcement. Um, so I'm very, you know, it's so, it's so dangerous, you know, when you start, start you know, I, I get that question a lot. Like, don't you, you just witnessed, you just saw these things happen. You saw drugs coming across into the United States. You were right there. Isn't your, it your responsibility to you tell the authorities? You know what the, the leader of the cartel but looks it's not. like. <laughs> yeah. Our responsibility is to be there and to witness uh, and, and, and to show people what is happening. And hopefully with the work that we do, we will get people, you know, we'll get, we'll shine a light on this and we'll eventually um, make a dent, some sort of an impact in, in the world. And that's the best we can hope for. Well, wow. Let's take a look at a clip of you in traffic. We're heading to meet the dueño, the owner of a drug operation who's given us the green light to film his uh, lab in the jungle. All I know is that I've been promised to see the place where cocaine begins its 3,000 mile journey to the US. But for now, everyone is just nervous about getting there. We've been told that every time a car approaches or we go through these towns that have lights, that we should hide our faces because they don't want to see you know, any gringos in this area because it would raise suspicion. Mariana, thank you so much for what you do, and thank you for sharing it with us today. You can catch the entire first season of Traffic with Mariana Van Zeller, streaming now on Hulu. Continue blessings and safety, Mariana. 